Welcome to this month, September of 2020, uh, Review Brigade. Last month, uh, in continuing our Cincy ERB new series, Bill gave a presentation on Active Record, and we were just talking about it a minute ago. How much Active Record is the iceberg of Rails magic? Uh, there's so much underneath the surface, um, so it was impossible to cover even really adequately how much Active Record gives you and does on your behalf that you may not even know about in an hour. But this, this month is about action view. And we're gonna talk about rendering templates and, and that is a bit less magic. There's some in there, but Bill will we'll get into the details with that. And Bill, I appreciate you presenting. Um, without further ado, I guess, let's just get started. Awesome, thank you, Tim. I'm gonna share my screen. Get back over into Linux land. And um, as Tim mentioned, last week was, or last month was a bit of a fire hose. Uh, this month, a little less so. So um, hopefully we'll have plenty of time to cover everything and, and even a little Q&A at the end. Um, a little more prepared this month. So if you go to uh, Cincinnati RB on uh, github.com, uh, you'll notice the action view demo is uh, top repo there. So I've got all my notes in there. If you want to go now and check it out and follow along or just go to the website uh, and check it out uh, or follow along, um, that's fine. But um, it's all up there and, and you can look at the code and uh, as we kind of go through it um, or just follow along my screen, either way is fine. Um, but uh, in this demo, like Tim mentioned, we're gonna talk about action view. Um, the view part being the kind of the glue between the model or well, actually the controller being the glue between the model and the view. Um, but we, we've seen the model last month, um, two months ago, Tim kind of gave a higher level. Um, so you should have an understanding of uh, MVC kind of paradigm for application um, design. Um, but we're very much on the V part uh, and it, uh, Rails implements that through the action view gem. And we're gonna learn about templates, partials and layouts and what those mean and how they uh, work together. Um, and then the various response formats that you get pretty much out of the box with Rails. And then we're going to look at helpers, um, which uh, uh, you can use to tweak uh, the response that the uh, server sends back to the, the browser. So again, the prerequisites are exactly the same. There's uh, links to uh, YouTube videos on setting up Ubuntu LTS, um, Ruby, Node, and Yarn are required and then for the tutorial if you kind of follow along what I'm doing I'm using my Microsoft Visual Studio code and you can uh, um, um, see how to uh, get that and install it regardless of your environment there uh, in that video that's linked. Um, we're going to start with Rails new like we did before and we'll open uh, code into that action view demo directory. I've already done the Rails new part. I didn't want to slow down on that. You've seen it before, or if you want to see it, look at the other, uh, uh, or well, I guess just the previous video. Um, and then I'm not sure if I've committed it, but let's just go, let's look in code and see what I've done here. I've got to move the helpful zoom window. I'm gonna start another, I've got the server running already in that window. Let me see what git log says. Yep, okay. So I made the commit for the um, the Rails new action view generated um, code. And then uh, the interesting bit that where we really kind of get into it is we're always kind of starting from Rails new and then our pattern has been to uh, run a, uh, a uh, Rails generator. We generate a scaffold for the user and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this one is a little bit more involved than the last time and I'll kind of go through it here as I um, uh, run the command. So. Rails generate scaffold, users are model, 
We're going to have a username that's a string, a first name that's a string, a last name that's a string, but then we're going to have a bio field that's of type text, which will be kind of new. We haven't seen one of those before. Uh, bicycles, which will be an integer, a GPA, which is a float, a uh, birth date, which is a date type, and then an application expiration, which is a date time, and then a little Boolean called Earthling. So let's go ahead and do that. Let Rails do its part. And while it's doing that, um, we're going to also uh, go in and make our little configuration change to the routes and uh, set our route route to be a uh, user's index. So once we get that there, We're going to save that and then um, we'll have to migrate the database. And I'm going to go ahead and add this. And I'm going to do what was my commit. You'll see it, the, um, all these commits have been done exactly the same on this this repo. It's kind of chicken and egg a little bit, but uh, if you follow the repo, you have it checked out, you don't really need to do this. Um, but just for consistency sake, so we'll always have our Git log that we can look at. Um, there's the latest, generated the scaffold, yada, yada. Okay. Fine, um, what's that do for us? Well, uh, in Rails, um, if we look in the app folder, the V part obviously is down here in views and you see we have a users folder now in views and that directory contains a lot of interesting files. Uh, maybe the most interesting one to start with is new.html.erb. And we open that up and we see HTML and that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, but we see these other two lines that are, they have this weird tag that's not HTML that we know of and, and inside of it appears to be Ruby. <laughs> so you may recognize this syntax as Ruby syntax and that's exactly what it is. It's uh, ERB stands for embedded Ruby. So, uh, uh, Ruby templates, this new file is a Ruby template. And essentially what it does is it, it is a template for content that you'll be rendering frequently in your application. And the render method um, uh, takes arguments that uh, tell you what to render and also um, what data is needed to render um, that particular um, piece of uh, code. So anytime you see the angle bracket percent sign um, followed by an equal, that means output this to the screen. Sometimes you, you don't want the uh, screen to output a line um, uh, when you're uh, nesting conditional logic in your form. And we'll see some of that, but uh, or in your template or in your partial for that matter. Um, so you'll see that it just has the angle bracket without the equal sign. And sometimes there's a minus there, which sucks up the blank line that would be generated if you didn't have it in there. Um, but so uh, this, this is generating this form, um, this particular line. What, what is form? Well, if we notice in the, the directory, the user's directory in uh, app views, um, there's this underscore form file that is Ruby partial. So this render is calling this partial, which generates a form. And here's, again, we'll notice on line two, here's the uh, embedded Ruby tag 
without the equal sign, you'll see the form with above, and I'll get into that helper in a little bit, has, is followed by the equal sign. Um, we're not going to display what if user.errors.any um, returns to the screen, so we leave the equals off there, and that's just saying that this block here between um, the if and its closing end is showing any errors if they exist on the user. Um, we don't have any right now, so in a second when we look at the markup that's generated, um, you know, we're not going to see this block. But there's a bunch of kind of traditional HTML followed by these uh, embedded Ruby and, and we'll get into what those helpers are doing here in a second. Um, but that's, that's a partial. If we go and we look at what's been generated, and I had the server up before, and I'll go ahead and refresh since we made that route change. Here's our, um, here's our uh, user index view with all of the various data. I'm gonna go ahead and add a user right now I'm gonna put my let's see I'll put my github username if you want to follow me there and that's fine you'll see all my you know commits are linked to my user account there um, currently only have two bikes my GPA I think was what I put last time 3.4 um, birth date hmm yeah, that helper that Rails gave me doesn't go back as far as I'd like to, so I'm going to have to change that. There's my birthday. I'm putting it out there. Earthling, check. I'm going to expire my account a year from right now, and we'll say create the user. Here's the user show. Fine. We get that for free with Rails uh, generators. Um, but now let's go back to the new user form and let's view the page source. And one of the first things you'll notice is we've got this um, H1 header uh, with new user in it. And if we look back at our um, new view, well, there's that, okay. But in the HTML, that was generated, it's followed by this form stuff. And that looks kind of interesting in a bunch of fields. Uh, and as we recall that partial, the, the render form, rendering the form partial has this form with, which is generating that form tag in HTML for our model that's a user. And it's saying um, local set to true means that uh, the user that's passed through, I would like a local variable named user without the at sign, which is an instance variable. We'll get to that when we get more into the nuances of the Ruby programming language. Um, so notice here on the following line, line two, it just references user, not at user. So it's a, I want to be able to treat user as a local variable. Don't worry about that. But everything within this block, the form uh, with block, uh, I'm going to reference form, and that will be um, all the items that I'm going to put on the form, like the form label named username and the form text field named username also. So then we look back at our markdown or our markup, excuse me, and we see there's our First of all, here's all the form with all the, the proper um, uh, attributes set on it. The action is to user and it's gonna use a post. And if you remember the routes and routing and the controller methods, um, how they're wired together, uh, that uh, if you post to users a form, um, uh, you're gonna create a new user with the data that is contained in each one of these, these fields. So we saw here's the 
the username field, it's a type text in the first name and last name. Now I know we specified, as you'll recall in the generator, these were strings, um, but a string in RubyLand maps to a text type input in the HTML world. Um, but that's fine. And before we go into that too much, we notice there's all this other HTML that was generated aside from outside of our uh, new user um, template. So we have a template that renders a partial, but where does all that other HTML that we see in the response um, get generated? That is a layout and what um, Rails generates by uh, default when you generate the app, uh, when you do Rails new, you get an application.html.erb in the, anytime you see .erb on the file, you'll know that that's embedded, it contains embedded Ruby. Um, we'll look at that and we'll see um, the remainder of the HTML that was uh, generated in that uh, um, response. So there's the doc type, the head with some other helper files in here, uh, cross-site res uh, cross cross resource forgery. I don't know, Tim, correct me. CSP, which is a new uh, meta tag that um, uh, puts a nonce on the JavaScript that your um, uh, site uses and that if the, it helps protect against malicious uh, JavaScript um, being used on your website. Uh, uh, style sheet link tag, JavaScript, JavaScript pack tag. We'll sh see what those do here in a second. But these are all various helpers that are provided either through action view or various helpers. So if we go back and we look at the markup, there's the title as we expected. We get this uh, CSRF um, authenticity token with its value. Um, we get the style sheet linked in that we expect and our JavaScript, our application pack there. And that's everything that, um, so put all together, everything needed to render a response from the server is either generated by the, the template, uh, the, um, a partial, I'll just grab like, this part was rendered by the partial and from here up was rendered by the, um, the layout. And then if you scroll to the very bottom, you would see what, you know, this is essentially the remainder of the layout. Um, most of this was all generated by that partial and we'll get in there and you saw what's all this, you know, I mean, that's a heck of a lot of markdown that, these helpers generated for you for, um, you know, that back in the day we would have had to written all of this by ourselves and all these options and, and all of that would have normally been coded um, by hand. So action view gives you all of that. Um, sorry, my little notes. Laptop has gone to sleep. Um, I got alarms going off like crazy. Um, all right, so that's kind of the high level overview of what um, we get for, um, you know, for uh, from action view templates, partials and layouts. Another key component of it is uh, response formats. And we looked at in Saul, that um, we had for, let's say, show, we had um, this html.erb file, um, which is very similar to the form that was generated. The, the new view doesn't have a partial, though you certainly could you know, render a partial in here, but it's essentially showing us all the data for one particular user. And if we go back and we look at just showing a user. 
you'll see it's a similar situation. If we look at the, um, the source, there's our P tags with our labels and then our data following it. And if we look back at the code, it's P tag, the, the field name, and then the user data. Um, so uh, that's an HTML response. And by Rails, in, in default, if you do not specify a type on your a, um, a response format on your application, you're going to get HTML by uh, default. But we saw a second ago that there was a show dot uh, um, JSON dot JBuilder file, which renders the response as JSON. So another file format you get is um, with uh, generators, standard generators is uh, for show you get um, a JSON representation. And so you see here, um, this is a uh, JSON partial in users user with a, this is another way of defining a local variable that points to the instance variable that's sent down by the controller. So if we look at the user's user partial, which partials are um, uh, uh, called out by a file that starts with the underscore, you see we have user underscore user dot JSON dot JBuilder file. And if we look at that, there's methods, the um, uh, JSON, uh, um, variable is a, or object is a, a JSON representation or a, a series of methods that you can use to um, display JSON uh, in, in your response. So um, they extract user with these, all these specific um, attributes of the user, the ID, username, first name, et cetera. And then also the URL in the, in the JSON response is the user route, the, well, the URL to the user formatted as JSON pointing at the user that the controller handed lists. So I know that's a bunch you can, uh, free to um, dig into this as you see fit, but, <laughs> Pardon me. This is what JBuilder gives you out of the box. So again, if we look back here, um, we get our JSON response, and Firefox is prettying it up for us. But this is a JSON representation of the same thing we saw in our HTML view of me. But we can also get XML, but not at zero cost. So if we try that currently, we're not going to um, um, be able to display it without first adding a show XML dot builder file. And like um, um, JBuilder, uh, builder just plain XML builder is a uh, library that will uh, return XML formatted data. And I'm gonna go back to my notes and I'm gonna grab the snippet and you'll see it's pretty simple. And I'll walk through it, but. So here we have um, just similar to the uh, um, JSON variable we had, we, when we're rendering XML, we can say, give me an XML uh, tag called user and we pass it a block. And anytime you pass a block to um, any one of these attributes, it's, it nests that attribute in um, um, one level down in the XML. So what I'm saying here is I'm, you don't really need to understand this code. You'll see what it yields. But for the at user 
uh, which the controller passed me back. I'm gonna go loop over each of its attributes and get the key and the value of the attribute. The key is like username, first name, last name. The value for each of those is Agilis, Bill, Barnett, whatever. And I'm gonna create a tag for the key, which will be username, first name, last name. And the value of that is gonna be the value that I pulled off the attribute. And then just like the JSON at the end, I'm gonna put the URL for the user path for the user that was sent back to me, formatted as, as XML. So if I save that file, whoops, sorry, I'm trying to use my Mac commands in Linux world. And then I look back at our XML formatted response. There we go. We've got, we're now generating XML. And you saw how very little code that I had to write. Um, just that bit got XML. Again, there's our JSON. And without a format specified, I'm going to be handed HTML. Um, JSON is frequently used for like a uh, single page apps or to speak to um, your uh, a JavaScript front end if you've got one um, in your application. Um, XML is usually mostly used um, as we we're just uh, before we started the video, Tim was sharing some of the work he'd been done and, and a lot of legacy or maybe uh, more highly and specifically engineered systems will trade XML back and forth. Um, uh, that's one way to get it in Rails, as you see, provides us through Action View a simple way to do all that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. There's a bit more to do, but I'll pause now and see if there are any questions at all, if anyone has any. All right. If we're good, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed on. Um, we looked at each one of those responses. Um, a little word about <laughs> you know code comments so in our controller if we look at the user's controller um, you'll see that the show action already says if you get users one or this is the parameter part so this is like the the ID of the particular user in my case the since I entered that data first that's the first user it says it can get JSON. It can in it in it will respond to get uh, you know with the ID just an integer. But now we've just changed it to add um, XML. So if we really wanted to be pedantic, we could add this comment. Though it has no bearing on the code whatsoever. It's just showing whoever would come along and maintain this app after us that hey we. Um, we've added XML support to this particular uh, route. So if you're gonna show a user, you have access to show it through XML. That's all is uh, meant by that con that <coughs> section in the, the uh, demo here. Um, you know, as you, if you're coming from other um, programming languages or whatever, you know how quickly uh, comments and documentation gets out of sync. I'm just throwing that in there that if you see that generated code, that's what it means. You're getting JSON and HTML out of the box. We went ahead and added XML um, on our own. And uh, so I uh, just toss that in there. Let's go ahead and add what we've got to this point. So our commit message had an XML format to user show view. Um, now we're gonna get into helpers a bit. And um, you've seen them in action already. Form with that essentially gave us that, uh, the, the HTML markup for the form with all the right parameters uh, set so that when you submit that form, um, Rails receives that request 
and routes it accordingly and does everything it needs to do through um, Active Record and the Action Controller um, uh, decides or um, Rails decides uh, what to do, what the next response is and what to display um, through the controller action um, and then uh, composes the response through view and sends it all back. So all of that is kind of um, enabled through that form with helper, um, which comes from action view helpers form helper. Um, you saw the, the pluralized method in the, um, let's go look at the form partial again. Do I have that guy open right here? So up at the top, you have um, this pluralized helper, which says, given the current number of errors, the count of the errors that are currently set on user um, with the base of errors, pluralize it. So if I have one error, it's gonna say, uh, pluralize is gonna turn, return one space error in a string. Um, if I, if I have two or more errors or, uh, yeah, two or more errors, it's going to say two space errors or 15 space errors, however many there are. And it's going to just pluralize that for us. So, um, it's just kind of a, a helper that simplifies, uh, the, the need so we don't have to write that code to, to do, do that, handle that case for us. So you'll see that there's um, uh, text helpers supplied through uh, action view uh, modules. Um, there's date and uh, select and date time select, which are in date helpers. Now we're going to dig into that here in a second, but those are available. There's um, asset tag helpers that <coughs> do things, pardon me, like the um, JavaScript that um, we saw embedded in the header or the style sheet linked tags when you add style sheets and um, all of that that's uh, uh, packaged up for you. Those links are automatic, automatically <laughs> generated by Rails um, and those live in asset helpers. There's um, uh, another thing to look at in, um, Oh shoot, where would we see a route helper? Oh, I know, right here at the bottom of the form. Um, not at the form, at the bottom of the new page. Yeah, there's a link to user's path. And there are named routes as we saw in, and I guess I can bring them up here real quick. Rails, routes, oops. Dash G users controller oops what did I miss routes and you see there's this users um, without the underscore path, but this is a named route, a route named users, which points to users index. So when you click the link to back on the new form, it takes you to the users index view. Um, there are two, so you get this uh, part, uh, anytime you pass within a, a action view, users underscore path, you just get the path. If you were to say users underscore URL, you get the few, the full URL. What does that mean? Sorry. So if we look here, um, if we go to back, um, there's, let me just, this is the path portion. So users underscore path, routes to slash users. Users underscore URL is the whole thing, including the HTTP P, whack whack. This is the entire URL for the request. Um, so if you want users URL to include in an email that you send out when somebody's not logged into the app or whatever, um, 
you specify the full route because um, just slash users, the path itself will mean nothing in that email without the entire route. Um, let's see. Um, all right. So that is the um, just an overview of some of the helpers you get. Let's see how we can use those helpers. And you saw on our form, um, let's bring up the edit form, which uses the same partial, by the way. You'll notice if I look at edit HTML dot ERB in the views users folder, it renders the form also. Um, and it uses the same at user, which the controller sends, only this time the in the um, new view, at user is an empty user. In the edit view, at user is a fully hydrated user, which is me in this case. But we noticed um, like GPA, if we inspect this element, um, we'll see that it's just a, uh, it's a text field and Rails was smart enough to know that the integer value um, is type number, but our GPA, when even though we told the scaffold generator that it was a float, it doesn't know how to handle that out of the box. So we can fix that up easily enough by fixing the, um, the field. So we're going to change the value from a text input to a number input. Copy that guy. Go back to our form. And where we have GPA, you see that it's form text field name GPA. Right now, we're just going to replace it with a number field named GPA with a max of 4.0, a min of 0.0, .0 and a step of 0.1. So if I save this, go back to our server, close our little pre, well, I, let me just go ahead and re-render it like this so you can see. We'll reinspect this guy now. And we can see that number or that uh, GPA is now a type number. It has these attributes set on it. So now I can click the value up or down or use my up or down key. Whoops, wait a minute, not while I'm in it. Though. And then it will well, the UI, the user experience isn't great, but you can see I can click up and down and change those values now just by uh, changing the parameters that I send to that that particular helper. Another thing we noticed is that um, in the birth date, we're only, uh, the, the generator automatically generated like a 10 year um, span of, uh, years in our, so if we go back and look at the form, when I was trying to do my um, birth date, I only had the options of back to 2010 and up to 2020. Uh, and that just doesn't seem right. And you saw if we, ex uh, let's inspect that element that we got the select, the HTML select we wanted, but all these options automatically generated for us, um, but they weren't the right ones. They weren't the ones that we wanted. Um, so we'll go back to birth date and we'll make a change there. And let me go ahead and close our screen there so we can kind of see the full thing. So now we're telling me, give me a date select name, birth date, but I want to start year that's 120 years ago in local time and just take the year off of it. 
because I think I read the oldest living human being is 115. And just in case that person finds our site and, you know, maybe someone, maybe his older sister or something or her older sister finds the site, whatever. <laughs> you know, we're going to go back 120 years. In the end year, since we're only going to allow adults on our site, we want the end year to be 18 years ago in local time and just grab the year off of that. And then what I'm going to do is select 18 years ago in local time. So if I save that, go back to the view, re-render it, you'll see the birthday change. I can now put my real birthday in there and no one look. And voila, um, we've got that. And we notice also if we look, um, 20, 2002 is the latest year we can pick uh, because we've limited it to um, 2002. I guess I should also show you in like GPA, if I keep going up, I can't go past four. And if I go down those min values we set, I can't go past zero. Um, you could manually inner values um, that exceed those, but we won't go into that. With a select, you can't. With just these uh, text or number fields, you can. All right, and then the last thing um, we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, um, we're gonna look at the uh, date time select. Um, and uh, we noticed that it, it picks the current time by default, and that's kind of good, but no one wants an account that's expires right as you, you know, create your account. So let's go back in and change the date select for the um, account expiration. And we're going to say, um, we want the AM PM format, not the military time 24 hour clock. And we're going to select one year ago from now in local time as the expiration. So this will have to go, I'm going to save it. And we're going to, since there's already data in my form, let's go to the new view. And if we scroll down now, we'll see that the birth date was selected to be 18 years ago today. And the count expiration is set to um, this time, local time, one year from now. The only other real thing to notice kind of uh, um, that, uh, Active record or not active record action view um, did for us is created this checkbox field um, input. Um, that's the only different uh, the the input type that we haven't talked about yet. Um, there's some interesting behavior which we'll may talk about when we get to action controller on how Rails handles um, uh, checkboxes and why there's this um, hidden input right above it that shares the same name that's that's for action controller if we get to it but um essentially now uh we've we've used the um uh we've modified these uh helpers to generate um uh you know behaviors that we expect from our app aside from just the default behaviors that um, action view gave us when the uh, we generated that user scaffold um, that's pretty much it for what i've got i'm not going to go ahead and do the last commit uh, you can see all the commits there you can walk through this a uh, little by little and explore and play um, there's some further reading on the uh, active record gem or action view gem itself and the rails guide um, there's a lot of nuanced stuff at the bottom of the rails guide that's kind of uh, too much to go into in the time that we have um, and this all came from a gist that i created for this purpose but now it's all 
checked into the repo. And again, you can get to it on the CINCRB action view demo. Here's the URL, you can step through it. Um, but with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, Bill, you used uh, different uh, tools or features. Uh, what's a good source? Uh, where's the documentation or library where we can find where those are documented? Um, by tools, do you mean like the IDE, the um, like uh, Visual no. Studio Code? No, uh, so in um, you used AM, PM, or some? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, sure. The, that's what where the uh, the um, gem documentation like down here, the, uh, if you go to Ruby gems um, and you just enter the name of the gem, which is action view in this case, um, that gets into the very specific. So then from there, if you look at the documentation, um, you can do a search for uh, date underscore select. Oops, if I spelled it properly. And then there's the various um, date selects and then the options that are passed to them are all documented in there. So uh, api.rubyonrails.org is your, is your friend. Uh, got it, thank you. And uh, other part, uh, like is uh, that uh, plural, uh, sorry, I can't. Yeah, no pluralizing is also part of it, or is it something? Um, like a, that's in uh, yeah, that's in the the helpers. Let me go back here and then yeah. I'm just having terrible. So you just uh, do a search for pluralize, and then if you scroll to the top, it'll show you where. Uh, what model that's, uh, what uh, module that's part of. So that's an action view helpers text helper. So again, api.rubyonrails.org is your mm -hmm. friend. And you can see, you can go to any Rails version, like you got a you know, 5.0.2 or something. I hope that's a, oh, wait a minute. But there, and then there's the docs for Rails 502. So one of the things that's helpful, especially um, if you're working on legacy apps, is just go here, make sure, you know, like, like you do with, you know, if you work with the Node or anything else, a lot of their documentation, you know, you can just dial back to the right version. Just make mm -hmm. sure you got the docs for the version that you're using. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, knowing that those tools is really awesome. Awesome, thank you. So I might have uh, I might have missed it. Um, Action view, Bill, is that that's a gem that doesn't come with Rails out of the box. You got to yes, add it. Yes, no, no, it does. It does. If you do Rails new um, and then your project name, whatever, Action view is the part, the main component that does the. Um, that composes the response that's sent back to the browser. Okay. So just like we had active record was that um, um, the handles the data persistence and the model portion of MVC action view is the portion that handles um, uh, the uh, response composition part of the MVC framework rails that you get you know, for free. So don't have to install anything. Rails new demo. You got Action View, Active Record, Action Controller, a ton of others. But. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. And I, I guess it's a, a naming convention thing, but it's it's easy for me to get Action and Active. Yeah, you will. It, I don't. I don't know anything about the. I mean, you can look over here. There's Action Controller, Act or Act Action Cable, Action Controller. Action dispatch, action, action, action. There's but active job, active model, active record, yeah. um, active support. Oh yeah, I said active model before. We we're actually talking about active record, but act, active record and active model play hand in hand. So I don't know where the naming convention came from, except for active record was one of the design patterns um, identified. Uh, was it Gang of Four or was it just Martin Fowler? I forget who specifically but it's a it's a software development design pattern 
um, enterprise software design pattern that's repeated. So I think that may have started the ball rolling when DHH was coming up with Rails and Gems and how to name things. Um, so something else that's kind of interesting is some of the templating that you used um, uses something called ERB. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know this, but ERB is actually built into Ruby core. It's part of, yeah. well, it's, it's part of the standard library that comes along with Ruby. So the templating itself is, I think it stands for enhanced Ruby, um, or embedded, embedded, Ruby. embedded Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually do templating in strings. You don't, it doesn't have to be in like an ERB file. Yep. You can actually do templating in strings, compile the template, and then use that on projects that aren't generating HTML. In fact, yep. you can template really anything. So if you if you had a project where you were doing some kind of code generation or report generation that wasn't HTML, you don't even need Rails. You can you can use ERB in and of itself. So it's pretty it's pretty cool and and pretty flexible. That yep. whole syntax travels across whatever kind of domain you want to use it in Ruby. Well, we're at 102, so I'm still, I'm fine to hang out and answer questions if anyone has any more, but 